Hi, the marginal rate of substitution is a concept which is not that easy to understand, so please give me a chance. We know that on a difference curve, the utility level is the same, so that's the core message you need, uh, unless you are able to understand what is the marginal rate of substitution. So the utility level is the same here on the indifference curve. Okay, now let's go to point A. So in point A, we have only a little bit of x1, right? So uh, the marginal utility of an additional unit consumed x, of x1 is, is, is quite high, right? So if you have to give up uh, one unit, uh, let's say that's one unit, to give up one unit, where we only have a little bit of, so we have to be compensated by a lot of x2, right? So we have to be compensated by a lot of x2 to remain on the same utility level. That's the intuition, right? And on the other hand, if you have already a lot of x1, right? You have a lot, a lot of x1, so uh, your uh, marginal utility to get another unit of x1 is, is quite low. So if you have a lot of x1, then if you have to give up one unit of x1, you only have to be compensated by a little bit of x2, by a little bit of x2 to remain on the same utility level. That's the intuition, right? So the marginal rate of substitution is going down, is diminishing here uh, along the indifference curve. Now take a number example to understand the marginal rate of substitution. So we said we have to give up one unit of x1 and let's say that's minus one, right? And you have to compensate a household by six units. So this means the marginal rate of substitution is minus six. Just to believe that for a second. And here in point B, uh, if you have to give up one unit of x1, you have to be compensated by, let's say, one unit of x2. So that's not exactly drawn, but at least you get the message. Formally, the marginal rate of substitution is nothing else than the slope of the indifference curve at that point and the slope of the indifference curve at that point. And you could do that, of course, for any point on the indifference curve, right? So formally, that's just uh, we derive the x2 with respect to x1, that's the derivation, and we apply the so-called implicit function theorem that would tell us that in such a case the partial utility with respect to x1 and the partial utility with respect to x2 uh, are uh, combined uh, in a ratio and you have the minus uh, before that ratio. This is in fact nothing else than the total differential a little bit uh, rearranged, right? So-called implicit function rule and the marginal rate of substitution is the slope. So it's the slope in absolute terms. So the slope here in absolute terms is six. The slope here in absolute terms is one. So we observe a diminishing marginal rate of substitution along the indifference curve. So that's the technical background. You don't need that uh, for the exam, but maybe at least you have heard it once and say, okay, interesting. And uh, for those who want to dig deeper uh, with respect to math, please feel free to do it.